Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the next installment of our Android Tip Calculator tutorial. Now, where we la left off last time was we just finished making the UI for our app using XML. Uh, but now that that's set, we need to make the UI actually do stuff. Right now, none of the buttons or the edit text do anything. We have to make them interact with the user. And to do that, we need to use Java instead of XML. So open up your project, go to the source folder, go to the package you define, and open main activity, if that's what you called it. And since I'm assuming that you have no Java or programming knowledge uh, at all, I'm just going to go ahead and describe everything that was automatically created for us by Eclipse. This is the code that Eclipse basically always makes for us when we create a project. Let's go over it line by line. Now if you didn't know, a computer for most programming languages will go from the first line and then go down line by line doing things in order. So that's the way we're going to think about this too. The first line says, and these purple words are keywords. So the first one is package, and then the description of our project file directory. Package describes where our project is and how it's organized in relation to everyone else's project. And this information here is used mostly so that if you make code that you want other people to be able to use, you can tell them the package and then they'll be able to use it. Uh, assuming they also have your source files, obviously. So it's not too important. Let's just move on to the import lines. Now, if you click this button here, it'll show all your import lines. Now, in, okay, so these are statements. And a statement in computing refers to a sentence that tells the computer something. And import statements are sentences that tell the computer where to find certain bits of code for you to use. So there's lots of pre-made code that the Google developers made for us about Android. For instance, there's code about menus. But before you can use the Google code for menus, you have to import the code from somewhere. And the place you import it from is the Android library. And this is the package location for the Android library. Uh, well, this is the Android library, and this is the part about menus. So before we can re reuse menus, we have to import the code about menus, and then once we do that, we can write about, we can use the code uh, that has to do with menus. And you notice that if you hover over anything in Eclipse, uh, it'll usually tell you what it means. Uh, well, it's supposed to. Stuff like... I don't know, sometimes it does. Maybe my computer's just too slow. But yeah, normally, if you hover over stuff, oh, there we go. It'll give you information. Uh, but anyway, let's go back to... So that's what import does. It lets you use code from somewhere else that you haven't actually written. And since 90%, for like 99% of code that programmers write is actually other people's code, it's very useful. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to get the phone. Okay. I'm sorry, I was interrupted by the phone, uh, but now that's taken care of, so we know what import does. Let's move on. Public class main activity extends activity. This is sort of a big one. And this is going to be the focus of this episode. Okay, let's talk about classes first. Now we know what objects are already, right? I talked about that in the UI section. Let's talk about classes. A class is basically the blueprints for a, an object. A class describes it as a hypothetical object. Now it's not actually created yet, it's just a hypothetical thing that has certain methods and attributes. And then using these set of blueprints, these instructions, you can create or instantiate a bunch of other objects. So to give an example, if we have a class called person, okay? And this person, this class has attributes like height, weight, and age. And it also has methods. Again, attributes and methods we went over last video, or last section, so we will talk about them again. Methods like walk, talk, eat. Okay? Now, say we want... Now, these things might have default values. Or... They might not. They might be empty or they might have default values. It doesn't really matter. These are a set of instructions. It's not an object by itself. 
It is just things something that describes a hypothetical object. Now, using these uh, these instructions, we can create many objects that are people. So we can quickly create a bunch of stuff based on these instructions. And again, uh, the proper term is instantiate. But not all people are the same. So give me one second. So we created three objects based on this class, and we can call them Jim, Pam, and Mike. Now Jim probably is not the same height as Pam. He can be maybe I don't know what units this is in. Nothing really makes sense, but whatever. Pam might be 80, Mike might be 90, okay? And then maybe Jim is 200, but Pam is only 100, and Mike is 150, and they're all different ages too. So as you can see, even though we all, all three of these objects were built from the same class, they're different because they have different attributes. Um, so basically, they're different people, but they are all people, if that makes sense. They are all created from the same base class, so they're all the same type of object, but they're different versions of that type of object, okay? And even the methods can be changed to do different ways of walking and different ways of talking. So you don't have to change it, it has default values, or it might not, but if it does, it has default values. And if you don't change it, it'll also have the default values, but you can, if you want, change your object when you make it to have uh, different values than what the default instructions say it has. So that's what classes are. It is basically a set of blueprints that lets you instantiate objects from it. And yeah. Uh, and if you don't quite understand yet, don't worry about it. Um, it's not something you get right away. It takes some sleeping to get over it. And I also, if you, again, if you want, you can read the written version of my website, which might help you understand it better. There's graphics and stuff. But for now, let's look at this. The first word, the first keyword is public. Public refers to whether or not something can interact with something outside of that class. So, or it says whether or not an object can interact with other objects. We're not going to worry too much about it. Uh, the opposite of public is private. And related to that is protected. They're all the same kind of keyword. We're going to ignore this keyword right now because it's not important for the tip calculator, but we'll talk about it when we make the next tutorials. Class. Okay. Main activity. This says, okay, well, let's look at the end first. Right here, we have fancy brackets. You'll notice that most lines in Java end in semicolons. The ones that don't uh, mean something specific. With brackets, it can mean a couple of things. One of the things it could mean is that we're defining something. And in this case, that's what we're doing. We're defining something called main activity. And what is main activity? It is a public class. And what about this public class? Well, it extends activity. Okay, so, oh, and the definition ends when the brackets close here. This bracket corresponds with this one. Anyway, so what does extends mean? Well, we already know that... Yeah, let's start over. We already know what inheriting means right we talked about inheritance in the last episode or the last section extends in your head is roughly translated to inherits from so our public class main activity which is what we're creating here or describing or defining rather extends activity what does that mean it means main activity inherits from the activity class. And the reason we're able to use activity is because we imported the code in the Android library about activities. If we didn't, then Eclipse would get mad and I'll say you have to import this. So yeah, anyway. Um, so in other words, main activity inherits from activity, which means main activity has all of the methods, all of the methods and attributes that activity has. Okay, so that's all that means. It means we're creating or we're defining an activity or a class that's public and we're going to call it main activity and it's going to inherit from the activity class. And so it has all the methods and attributes that this default Google activity has. If you're wondering what an activity is, the activity is it's basically like a window in your computer. 
it's uh, yeah, it's basically just a window and it has stuff inside of it, like buttons and edit text that you can, uh, you know, the, the user can interact with. So, and it's the, like the base object that your your programs are going to be built around. Okay, so we're going to define it in these brackets. How are we going to define it? First thing we're going to do is at override protected void on create blah blah blah. Okay, let's look at this line. At override. Now I said that when you inherit, like when you create an object, or yeah, when you create an object, you inherit all of the methods. One of the methods that activity has is on create, and on create is a piece of code that runs automatically when that activity is instantiated. Now I already told you that when you inherit code from uh, another class, you don't actually have to have it be the, exactly the same. By default, it will be the same, but you can specify it so that it'll be different. And the way to do that is to put at override above the code. So when you say at override on create, you're saying, okay, I know I inherited on create from activity, but I want a different version of on create for my main activity. So I'm going to override the default on create and I'm going to override it so that it is defined such as this. And again, you see the brackets here defining what we're going to override it to. So instead of the default on create method that activity has, we want it to be replaced with the specific code that we wrote. And right here, protected again, don't worry about it. Void, uh, uh, should I talk about this? Okay, really quickly, the method can either do something or tell us something or both. If it tells us something, or if it doesn't tell us anything, then it returns nothing. And returns means tell us. So if it doesn't return anything, you just put void. And the onCreate method, it just does something. It doesn't tell us something. So that's what we put here, void. Void means nothing. Again, not very important. So it's sort of don't worry about it. Override, on create. Then right here we have something in parentheses. Uh, this is an argument. Methods have arguments which we can give to them. So sometimes when a method needs to do something, it requires more information. And we can give the method more information by putting it inside of these parentheses. These. And th then that information is called an argument and it's called we're passing uh, an argument to the method. Uh, to help it do stuff. So forget this particular part here. Don't worry about that. Uh, but you'll see an example of it uh, soon. Okay, so the next line is, and again, what's in this code block here refers to what we're replacing the default on create that we inherited from activity is going to do. First line is super dot on create, and then an argument that you don't have to worry about. Super dot on create. The keyword super means run the piece of code that follows, run the version of the piece of code that follows from the parent class. So a parent, when we're talking about classes, refers to the class that you inherit from. So when we said main activity extends activity, activity became the parent class of our main activity and main activity became the child class of activity. So that's the hierarchy relationship there. When you say super on create, we're basically telling it to do Run the onCreate method from your parent class. In this case, our parent class is activity, so we're saying run the onCreate version of activity. And at this point, you're going, wait, that seems counterintuitive. We just said we're going to override the onCreate method of activity, and the first thing we do is just to run the onCreate method from activity. And the reason we do that is we actually want the default uh, stuff that activity does on create want to do all the stuff that Norman does, and then we also want to add some stuff. And the way to do that is, say you're going to override it, oopsies, say you're going to override the thing, and then the first thing you do is run all the things that it runs by default anyway by using the word super, and then underneath it, say all the special, unique stuff, the specific niche stuff that you want your main activity in particular to do. Okay, hopefully that made sense. So that's what the first line means. And the second line is the unique thing that we want to do that activity does not do by default, and that is set content view and then an argument. This is an example of an argument that we actually care about. The set content view method uh, refers to, or what it does is, it sets the UI of your app to, based on the uh, information it finds in a document that you pass as the argument. So the argument we pass is r.layout.activityMain. And that refers to the res folder, the layout folder, and then the activity underscore main.xml. 
So that's the argument that we pass to set content view. And then set content view looks at that file at that location and says, okay, I'm going to use this XML file. I'm going to create the layout based on this information. Okay. So that's what that does it. Oh, and this process is referred to as inflating the user interface inflate. So do everything a normal activity does and then create a user interface or inflate the user interface based on the XML file we made last section of the tutorial. Okay, and the last set of code right here, and you'll notice these brackets again. When we override something, we're essentially redefining something. So again, all the stuff inside here is being defined, or is the definition. Okay, right here. We override another uh, default method that we inherited from activity. This one is called onCreateOptions menu. And that is automatically run when the user creates or hits the settings button that is on every Android phone. And what we want it to do is we run this method here, get menu inflator dot inflate, and then an argument. And what this line says is inflate the menu options or the menu setting or yeah, the options menu based on the XML file that you can find in res menu folder activity main. And so if you look there, we have not the XML file. And this one we actually never edited, so what we're going to get is we're going to inflate the menu options with a default Android menu. And to show you what that means, I'm just going to run it in the ABD to show you what that looks like. That's going to take a while to load, so while we're waiting for that to happen, we can keep talking. Uh, did I run it? I can't tell. Is it, is it starting? I think it's laggy because I'm recording. That and the AVD is laggy by default. I'm going to click one more time to make sure. Okay, there we go. Okay, while we're waiting for that to start, let's continue. So that's what this does. Um, it inflates the menu based on this file, just like this inflated the UI based on this file. Public, again, don't worry about it. Boolean is the return value. So again, don't worry about it. Return true, don't worry about it. It's not too important. Um, oh, right here, this is a comment. Now in Java, if you put two forward slashes, and then anything after that forward slash in, in that line, the computer will ignore, and it's a comment. A comment is information that you can leave for yourself uh, that helps you remember what certain code means. So if we want to put a comment here, we'll say, the below code inflates the options menu um, using the XML file in the menu folder. So then what will happen is uh, when the computer gets to this line, it will just completely ignore that. That is for the programmer's eyes only, and it will skip to the next line. So it won't interact or affect with your, your code at all. It's just for you, and you should probably get in the habit of using comments because it's very helpful. And it makes your code more readable, which is helpful, or which is good. Okay, so while we're waiting for this, let's recap everything really quickly so we understand. Package describes the location of your project so that other people can import from it. Import statements lets you use code from different libraries so that you don't have to write all the code yourself. Uh, public class main activity extends activity refers or means you're creating or you're defining a class called main activity and it's public and inherits from the activity class. Now how are we defining it? Well we're defining it as something where we override the onCreate method from activity that we inherited and we're going to have it do what it always does anyway plus we're going to have it inflate the UI which is something that it doesn't do by default. And we're also going to override the onCreate options menu and we're going to have it inflate the options menu based on this file here. And that's it. That's all we that's all we get by default for free that Eclipse makes for us. And yeah. Oh, here we go. We can try it now. So again, we're checking to see what the options uh, inflator does for us. If we click uh, the menu button, it'll, it'll create a settings thing. And if we click that, nothing happens because we set the XM or the that's what the default options menu looks like. Okay, uh, so we're done. The only question you might have now is, 
all this code so far, according to what you've told me, is defining the main activity class. But what actually runs the app? What? So we know that when the main activity is created, it automatically runs this code. But where in this program does it say create main activity to begin with? And the answer to that is when you created this project in Eclipse, Eclipse automatically set the one activity that it makes for you as the default activity. You can change the default activity, although we won't need to. But what the default activity is, is when, and when the user launches your app, Android looks at the default activity and it sees that it's main activity. And then it instantiates it. In other words, based on this main activity class, it creates a main activity object. Okay? And as soon as the object is created, Android will notice that it has an onCreate method. So that means that this will run. And when this runs, it'll do all the things an activity normally does when it's created and it'll inflate our UI. So in other words, none of this code actually says do anything. The Android, or not really, but yeah, the Android uh, system automatically sees that this is the default, uh, default activity. So it creates an object from this uh, blueprint, this class. And then once it's created, uh, it does this stuff, right? I think I just repeated myself there, but whatever. Okay, that's all we're gonna do for this episode longer than I meant for it to be, but we had to go over classes, which is kind of important.